Which one of these are faster, hot or cold? Hot, because you can catch a cold. <laughs> That's a knee slapper. What's up students? Welcome yet again to PC Youth Online. I hope that you all had a great week and I really hope that tonight can be a blessing to you and an encouragement to you. I'm gonna say this maybe a couple more times but on Friday nights this is what youth group is going to look like for the next little while and so you can tune in every single Friday night at 6 p.m. A link to a video will be posted on Facebook, on Instagram, and on our church website. And if you have a hard time finding it, just message me directly, privately. I will send you the link personally. All right, let's dive into it. Woo! So tonight, I would really love to talk about serving and missions and not being stagnant, not being still. Even though right now we are being asked to isolate ourselves and quarantine ourselves and sort of be stagnant and still, there are still many, many, many ways where you can serve those around you. And yes, young man, young woman, you are called to serve. I wanna ask you, when you hear the word serve, what comes to mind? Go ahead, take a second and think about it. I'll just stare into the screen. All right, hopefully you've had enough time to think about what the word serve means to you. Here are a couple of definitions that I wanna to read to you. The first definition I have is to perform duties or services for another person or another organization. The other one I have, number two, is to provide an area or group of people with a product or service. So often, and let's be honest, who do we serve best? Hmm, yes, that's right, ourselves. Serving ourselves, no matter how good we can be at it, no matter how good we do it, it will still leave us feeling unsatisfied or empty. Yes, that is the truth. Maybe you can relate. But what happens though, when you serve somebody else, when you help someone, when you perform a random act of kindness. You feel good, right? You feel like you've done something right. You feel like you've done your good deed for the day. You feel like you've accomplished something. If you don't know what the Good Samaritan Act is, I'm not even gonna tell you right now. I wanna challenge you to do a little bit of your own research and Google it, Good Samaritan Act. Google it, I want you to find out what that is on your own, okay? But those good feelings that we get when we serve somebody else, when we feel good about ourselves, when we feel like, man, like, I just did something nice and I, and I feel really accomplished or I feel like, you know, I've, I've done a great deed for the day. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that that happens within you when you serve somebody, when you bless somebody, when you help somebody? I'll tell you why. You were created and hardwired to serve. That's right, you were created and hardwired to serve people around you, to serve the people in our world, and to serve the needy and the most vulnerable. In Isaiah chapter six, verse eight, Isaiah said this, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I replied, here I am, send me. Me. So Isaiah responded to the voice of God. He responded to the call of God. He responded to what God wanted him to do. He responded in an act of service. So I want to ask you tonight, when God calls upon you, when there's an inclination inside of your heart to do something nice, compassionate, a random act of kindness for someone in your life, for someone around you, will you do it? And not even waiting for that call, not even waiting for that opportunity to arise, but to, go out, but to go out and actually seek out an opportunity to serve. It's one thing to wait for an opportunity to serve, but it's a completely different thing to go out and actually seek out an opportunity to serve or seek out a person that may be in need of service. Will you respond? 
Will you go out? So often, and even for myself, so often we ask to be used by God or even in general by people around us or in the world. So often we ask to be used, but when it comes down to it, for some reason, for whatever reason, we turn the other way. Now, there are probably many reasons why we would turn the other way, whether it's intimidation, whether it's low self-confidence, whether it's lack of resources that we think we may not have. But the bottom line is you were called to serve and when God calls you to do something, he will make sure that you have everything that you need in order to serve in whatever way it is that he's calling you to serve or whoever it is that he is calling you to serve. Before we go any further into this, let's just take a quick moment like we do each and every single week and pray. God, I thank you so much for today and I thank you for the incredible love that you have for each and every single one of us today. And Lord, I pray right now that you would speak to us through your word, speak to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits, and and Lord, may we have a fresh revelation of the love that you have for us, a fresh revelation of your grace and your mercy and the heart that you have for those around us. And Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that many of us will arise to serve in ways that we never have before, to be inspired, God, to be bold and to be generous and to take advantage of what it is that you've given us, gifts and talents and abilities, to not only use them for us, Lord, but to use them for those around us. Lord, reveal yourself to us, reveal your word to us today. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that before this day is over, many of us will rise up as leaders and as servants. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So not only were you created and hardwired to serve, but you were also saved to serve. We serve God by actually serving others. It's an act of worship dear and close to the heart of God. God loves it when we serve each other, when we help each other out, when, when we bless each other, when we give each other a, a helping hand or give one another a shoulder to cry on, all right? We're his children and we're all brothers and sisters. And so for me, even from as a father, I love it when my kids get along and help each other. And I absolutely sometimes despise it when all they do is fight and argue and cry and complain and they can't share. It bugs me, okay? And so God sort of feels the same way. When we're in cahoots with one another, I'm sure it upsets him a little bit, but when we're out there serving each other and, and blessing one another and being nice and kind and respectful to one another, man, God absolutely loves that. And so it's actually a command to serve and love one another. Mark chapter 10, verse 43, here's what it says. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. That is like opposite of the world's mindset, isn't it? The world defines greatness so often in terms of power, money, possessions, prestige, position, looks, all sorts of stuff that actually really in the end does not matter. Some of it matters, but I think you know what I mean. So often the world will say, man, if you can demand service from mother and get it, pff, you've arrived, you've made it. I don't think that's the case. We are in a, a me first culture and have been for a long time. And I think that we will be in for a time to come acting like a servant is not a popular concept. We act like being a servant is not at all a popular concept. We have taken that word servant and twisted it and, and misused it and, and it's like a wrong thing or a bad thing to say or an offensive thing to say that someone is a servant. Like you're gonna serve me and, and you're gonna do what I tell you. But we just need to shift our perspective on that word and the definition of it and, and who actually uh, called us to be a servant. Here's an interesting thing. Jesus measured greatness in terms of service, not status. Isn't that cool? Jesus measured greatness in terms of service and not status. I love it. God determines your greatness by how many people you serve, not how many people serve you. 
Mm. I'm gonna repeat that. I want that to sink in to your heart today. God determines your greatness by how many people you serve, not how many people serve you. Again, this is so contrary to the world's mindset and the world's idea of greatness that we have such a hard time understanding it and an even harder time putting it into practice. Thousands and thousands of books have been written on leadership, but few on servanthood. Everybody wants to be a leader, but nobody wants to be a servant. If we're all honest with one another, I think most of us would rather be generals instead of privates, kings over pawns, being upfront instead of in the background. Even Christians want to be servant leaders, okay? Not just plain servants. So if you're a Christian, we also have to look in the mirror and do some self-evaluating. But to be like Jesus is to be a servant. To be like Jesus is to be a servant. That's what he called himself. Jesus, the Son of God, called himself to be a servant. He came down not to be served, but to serve. Man, while knowing your shape, so like whether you're a square, or triangle, or circle, right, and where you fit in in life, knowing your shape is important for serving God. Having the heart of a servant is even more important. Remember, God shaped you for service. He shaped you exactly the way you are, okay? Not for self-centeredness but for selflessness. Without a servant's heart, without the heart of a servant, you might be tempted to misuse your shape, all right? To misuse the gifts and the talents that God has given you and, and using those for personal gain instead of serving those around you, which you have been called to do. You might also be tempted to use it as an excuse to excuse yourself from meeting certain needs. Listen, I believe, okay, and I firmly believe this, that God sometimes, He will test our hearts by asking us to serve in ways that we may not be shaped to serve in, or in ways that we may not like, or in shapes and forms that we might find inconvenient or outside of our comfort zone. Let me ask you this, if you see a man or a woman fall in a ditch, God expects you to help him out or help her out. And not to say, well, I don't have the gift of mercy uh, or service, and so I'm just gonna let somebody else walk by and take care of that person lying in a ditch injured. Listen, students, while you may not be gifted for a particular or specific task, you may be called by God or in a moment to do it if no one else is around you that is. Your shape reveals where you are called, but your servant's heart will reveal your maturity, your integrity, and your character. Listen, no special gift or talent is required to stay after youth on Friday nights to pick up trash or to help me stack chairs. Anyone can be a servant at any time and you do not have to wait for the call. You can just go and do it. Recognize the need and do it. Whether it's outside of your realm of, of ability or gifts or talents, you have the ability to recognize a need and fulfill it. Listen, most of you know where I work and most of you know my role. Just because I don't have the role of the custodian or the janitor, it doesn't mean that if I see trash on the ground, I'm not just gonna walk by and not pick it up. I'm gonna pick up that trash, I'm gonna put it in the garbage. If I go to the washroom and I see something unpleasant, I'm not gonna go chase down the janitor or the, or, or the uh, custodian to go and do it, I'm there. I have the ability to do it. It may not be a passion of mine, but I'm gonna do it because I know that that's what I'm called to do, to serve in any way that I can to help anybody at any time. Listen, there are times where I have literally picked up poop off of the ground in the church washroom because a toilet overflowed uh, because, well, somebody plugged it with either too much of you know what or just too much toilet paper. And I'm like, right then and there, what did I do? I didn't run and grab the custodian. I, I ran to the janitor's closet. I grabbed what I needed. I grabbed the plunger. I grabbed napkins and towels and mops or whatever. And I cleaned up the mess. Was it pleasant? 
No, but somebody had to do it then and there and I responded to the call. I wanna ask you this, how can you know if you have the heart of a servant? How can you know if you have the heart of a servant beating inside of your chest? Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16, you can tell what they are by what they do. In other words, sometimes it's really easy to spot a person with a heart of a servant, with a servant's heart, because they say yes to a lot and they jump up to the opportunity to help when somebody asks, or they look for an opportunity to serve without being asked in whatever situation, in whatever uh, moment, whatever the need is, whoever it is that they are asked to help or serve in that moment. First John chapter three, verses 17 to 20. Here's what it says. This is how we've come to understand and experience love. Christ sacrificed his life for us. This is why we ought to live sacrificially for our fellow believers, our brothers and our sisters, and not just be out for ourselves. If you see some brother or a sister in need and have the means to do something about it and turn a cold shoulder and do nothing, what happens to God's love? It disappears and you made it disappear. Woo, I love that passage, man. Like even for me, like it is really hard to walk by or drive by a homeless person and, and not do or say anything. Even if I don't have the ability to, to give them something in that moment or, or to go out and, and get them something to eat, right? Um, I, I still have this need inside of me to wanna stop and, and say a kind word to them, to, to have a quick conversation with them, or even pray with them. Sometimes they accept, sometimes they refuse, but you'll be surprised. Most of the time, they will accept. So, hey, side note, if you ever see a homeless person, ask them if you can buy them something to eat. If you have any cash on them, maybe give them a little bit of cash. Or if you don't have the ability to do either or, ask if you can pray for them. Ask them how their day is going. In conclusion, as we wrap up here tonight, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, here's what it says. It's a bit of a lengthy one, but I want you to focus, lean in, and follow along, please, okay? When the Son of Man, Jesus, okay, we're talking about Jesus here. When the Son of Man comes in all of His glory and with all of the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Wow. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing of clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. In that moment, the disciples were a little confused because they're hearing Jesus say this and they're like, Jesus, when did we ever see you in any of these situations or predicaments? But Jesus responded and he was like, hey, if you do it to this person or to that person, this man, this woman, this child, this senior, to this brother or sister of mine, whenever you bless somebody else, you have done it on to me. Jeremiah chapter one, verse seven, here's what it says. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. I love that. Jeremiah was worried about his age and feeling maybe a little insignificant or unworthy or incapable of serving or responding to the call that God called him to. Listen, I want to tell you, young man, young woman, on the other side of the screen right now, 
If you're thinking, man, I'm too young to serve, or I'm too young to do great things, or I'm too young to be a blessing to other people in my life, friends, family, neighbors, strangers, scrap that thought right now. That is a lie from the mouth of the enemy, and I rebuke it in Jesus' name. You are never too young to be a blessing. You are never too young to do incredible things. You are never too young to be uh, a compassion-filled servant, to bring joy to somebody's day, to, to uplift someone emotionally, to tell somebody about Jesus, to tell somebody about the good news, to tell somebody about the hope that you have in your life. You are never too young to live out greatness and to walk in greatness each and every single day. And it could be as simple as opening the door for somebody. It could be as simple as honoring your mom and your dad or your grandma, grandpa, whoever your guardian is, whoever it is that is watching over you. You are not too young to be like Jesus, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. You are not too young to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, to walk like him, to talk like him, to act like him, to think like him, and to serve like him, and to see people the way that he sees them, and to hear people's pain, and to be a shoulder for somebody else to cry on. You are not too young. Stop believing that. You are perfect in this time of life that you are in. God will use you right now as you are. When God calls you to do something or when you feel that slight inclination inside of you or that that part of you that's just like tugging at your heart saying, man, I should be doing something to help this person or I should be doing something to serve and, and to give back and, and, and to be the hands and feet in Jesus. Instead of saying, man, I'm too young, I'm too insignificant, I don't have the ability or the gifts or the talent or, or the resources. Instead of saying that, say, here I am, Lord. Send me, use me, and give me everything that I need right now to respond to this call and to be a blessing to this person or to this organization. And watch what God will do in you and through you and watch what he will say in you and through you by his Holy Spirit. So today, I want you to sign up. And I want to tell you that in this time of isolation and quarantine that we are finding ourselves in, maybe you're you're feeling helpless. Maybe you're feeling, man, how can I serve? Listen, it might be a little bit trickier, but it's not impossible. Okay. Don't remain stagnant. Don't remain still and just say, oh, well, it's kind of hard and kind of impossible because I'm trapped in my house and I can't do anything about it. No, you can do something about it. You can be a blessing to somebody else in this time. You can be of service to somebody else in this time who may very well just need someone like you to uplift them and bring them joy and to give them hope and to maybe even tell them about Jesus. Listen, you are called to be in service to your mom and dad. You are called to honor them or, or your grandma and your grandpa or again, whoever it is that is watching over you right now in your household. Do extra chores. Ask them how you can help. Ask them how you can be of service to them and a blessing to them, okay? I know that they would appreciate that. Maybe you have a neighbor that's old and maybe you can go out and ask them to do their yard work, okay? You can be practicing uh, social distancing while doing yard work for somebody who may need it. Somebody who might, I don't know, have a bad back or too old or sick. Pick up leaves, uh, pick up sticks, uh, you know, I don't know, plant some flowers for them. You know what I mean? Like there's always a way to serve your neighbor. Make them a nice meal and bring it to them if they're alone. If one of your neighbors are alone and lonely, you know what I mean? Uh, Whatever, uh, someone who may have lost their spouse. There are many ways that you can bless those people. Write a a, a thinking of you card. Write them a poem. Drop a flower off at their front door. Or again, seniors. There are a lot of seniors out there in this time right now, in this season of life that we are living in that are very lonely, missing their spouses, can't go out because they're vulnerable. Um, Be a blessing to them. Ask them, knock at their door, run to the sidewalk or run to the street and say, hey, how can I be a blessing to you today? How can I serve you? What can I do to brighten up your day? I'm passionate about this stuff, man. I hope you can sense it and I hope you feel it. There are a lot of people out there who need your help right now and I believe that God has called you to those people. All right. You you have the ability to make phone calls, make phone calls, check in on people, FaceTime with people, see how they're doing, ask them how they're doing, ask them how you can be a blessing or from afar to them, ask them how you can serve them from afar, encourage other people through social media. Young people, you're good at that, man. Post a video of yourself singing a song or reading a poem or saying a kind thought or a kind word or read a scripture and encourage people with it. Be the light of Jesus through social media. Challenge people 
people to give to charity. Whoa, challenge people to give to charity in a time where people have lost their jobs? Yes. Yes, that will determine your character. That will bring light to your character and your integrity. Man, like give to charities who may need it. Give to food banks. So many homeless people right now are hungry and food banks are low on food, man. Go give some food. Spend $20 of your own money. Go buy some food, go give it to the food bank. There's so many ways that you guys can serve and be a blessing to others and to be the hands and feet of Jesus where it's needed the most. That's it for today. Let's pray real quick. I hope that this was uh, an encouragement to you and a blessing to you and that I hope that it lit a fire up under your butt, all right, to not remain stagnant even though we're being asked to. You can still serve, still be the hands and feet of Jesus, still be a blessing to somebody, still be a bright light, okay, no matter how old you are, no matter what little or lots of resources that you have, there is always a way around it. There are no excuses. God, I thank you so much for who you are, and I thank you for the incredible love that you have for each and every single one of us. And God, I thank you, Jesus, that you came down on earth to serve us and to not be served. Jesus, you washed the feet of your disciples. You got down on your knees and you washed some dirty feet. And Lord, I pray that we would all live by your example. God, that you would encourage us to do so, to give us boldness to do so. God, to swallow our pride, God, and to stop using excuses as to why we are not a blessing to other people, as to why we don't go out and serve those who need need to be served. And Lord, I pray that we would not look at that word serving as something that is negative or something that is degrading, but something that is honorable. God, something that, um, hey, if you were able to do it and if you were called to do it, God, that we are also able to do it without any shame. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would put a call on somebody's heart right now. Whoever is hearing me right now, whoever is in the sound of my voice, God, that there would be a call on someone's life to rise up and be a leader in their generation, to be a servant in their generation, to do what nobody else is doing to go against the grain, to walk against the flow of things, and to make a difference in people's lives and to make a difference for your kingdom, God. And so, Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, by your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with your love, and God, that you would give us eyes to see others through the lens of compassion. Lord, that you would help us to be more like you, Jesus, to walk like you, to talk like you, to act like you, to think like you, to see others the way that you've called us to see others, and God, to have ears that are ready to hear the needs of other people. Give us the tools and the resources that we need. God, I know that you will not call us to do something uh, without providing us with a way, without the tools. And so, Lord, but at the same time, I ask that you would help us step out in faith and not worry about what we don't have, but be uh, mindful of what we do have, which is you with us in our corner, fighting on our behalf and working in and through us, speaking in and through us. And God, that is all we need. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much. And I'm excited to see uh, the future leaders that will rise up out of this current generation, God, uh, those that will make a huge difference with a heart of compassion. Lord, I pray for those who may be feeling discouraged right now, unworthy. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for boldness to arise inside of them. God, I pray that you would refresh us all, take away the cabin fever, take away whatever it is that we may be dealing with right now in Jesus' name. Heal those in our lives who may be sick. And God, help us to continue to be the church even in this time of life that we find ourselves in. We love you and we pray this in your wonderful name, Jesus. And everyone said, amen. That's all for this week, students. Thanks again for joining me, joining us for PC Youth Online. And I wanna remind you that you can do that each and every single week at 6 p.m., okay? And I also want to encourage you to invite other friends that uh, you have in your life to join and watch along with you or send them the link. Uh, whether they go to church or not, okay? Whether they've been to our youth group before or not, encourage them. That is one way that you can serve even right now. Share this video with your friends through Facebook, through Instagram, okay? Whatever social media platform you want, all right? But make an effort to gather every week at 6 p.m., all right, so that it feels like there's still a group gathering on Friday nights. And uh, I do wanna remind you that this link is available throughout the week 
every single week. So you can find it on Facebook and Instagram. Click it, the video lesson will be there for you. Weekly challenges, those are still going and popping and rolling, okay? And the daily video challenges as well. Participate in them, have fun with us, all right? Give yourself a chance to win a prize and um, make sure that you still keep your prayer requests rolling into me. If you wanna call me, if you wanna uh, FaceTime me, message me, please do that. I love receiving that and um, I'm excited to uh, be able to pray for you and with you and yeah, Let's, let's uh, stay positive. Let's keep Jesus at the forefront of our minds in these times. And I know that we will be able to hug one another once again and have a crazy fun time in the Blair Room at the church where we do all sorts of nutty stuff. All right. I love you guys. You're the best. Peace out.